Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and it's actually been quite a while since I've made just a dedicated 3D and Game Maker video that wasn't part of, like, collisions or optimization or something, something like that. Today let's talk about part of the projection matrix that I've rather conveniently ignored up until this point, and those are the clipping planes. So, when you create yourself a 3D projection in Game Maker or in anything else, uh, you probably have, if you're working with a perspective projection, you probably are going to have a field of view, an aspect ratio, a Z near, and a Z far. And the last two parts of that are what we're interested in today. If you're working with an orthographic projection, you will also have a Z near and Z far, but typically when you're working with 3D and Game Maker, you're not concerning yourself with that. So the effects that Z near and Z far have on the way your 3D scene is rendered is anything nearer to the camera than Z near will not be rendered, and anything farther away from the camera than Z far will also not be rendered. And because nothing in computers is infinite, you can't just set Z near to zero and Z far to infinity and expect the game to just be able to render everything. Uh, this does have some implications on things such as depth. It has some implications on the computer's ability to figure out if something is closer to or farther away from the camera than something else. What exactly the best value for the clipping pl plane should be depends on exactly what the scale of your world is. Uh, pretty much by default, I've been either going with 1 and 32,000 for the near and far clipping planes in pretty much all of these 3D videos, or on occasion I will do 1 and 10,000 for the clipping planes in these, um, in 3D and Game Maker. Within reason, you can more or less set these values to whatever you want. If you've ever used uh, the Unity game engine before, its default clipping planes will be 0 0.3 on the near and 1,000 on the far, and... In Unity, by default, the game engine assumes you are working on a scale of uh, one unit equals one meter, so uh, 0 0.3 means that anything closer than 0 0.3 meters to the camera uh, will not be rendered, and anything farther away than one kilometer from the camera will not be rendered. And if you're working with that, that's fine. A lot of other 3D tools also make that assumption. Uh, Blender uses that scale by default, for example. Uh, me, personally, I usually work with a scale of 32 uh, units equals one meter. Uh, this is mostly because I'm I'm used to coming from Game Maker, and if you were to try to use the room editor in 3D and Game Maker, uh, the grid by default is spaced about 32 units uh, by by 32 units. And if you were to try to have, for example, one tile representing one meter in the room editor, and you wanted to convert that into 3D and Game Maker, uh, you would probably be interested in um, in carrying that scale over. But that is very much not important right now. So if you want to see what happens uh, when you try and uh, use some other distances other than my defaults for the clipping planes in your, uh, in your 3D camera. Uh, you, can, you can do that. You can mess around with these values yourself. You can punch in whatever values you want. Uh, you can also use this little test example that I've whipped up, and that is to, uh, instead of hard coding in the near and far clipping planes into the 3D projection, I've, uh, I've set them to variables, and uh, when you hit the, uh, the number pad keys, you can change those values. For example, uh, setting Z near to 1, 1,000 versus 1 versus 100, and Z far to 10, 1,000, or 3,200. Uh, I'm going to run the game, and I'm just going to show off the effect that these have. Uh, so this is our default. This is Z near equals 1, and Z far equals 3,200. If I were to uh, if I were to set Z far to, for example, 1,000, you can see not much has changed in the immediate foreground, but uh, some things in the background have disappeared. If I were to back up farther away from the camera uh, sufficiently far, you can see that Link would disappear. But if I were to uh, if I were to set the Z far clipping plane back to 32,000, you can see that Link reappears because everything that is farther from the uh, the far clipping plane is basically thrown away. And uh, likewise, if I were to set Z far to something very close, uh, for example, 10, we would pretty much not be able to see anything. If I were to um, if I were to figure out where I am and walk like right up close to Link, I, I might be able to see a little bit of him, like of his, his arm and whatever this is. But we can't see much else because the Z far clipping plane is very close to our face. And we are, uh, I don't know, we're experiencing severe myopia or whatever you want in your, your analogy to do. That would probably be more something like a, a depth of field effect, honestly. Anyway, you can also go, uh, you can also work with the near clipping plane and you can, uh, for example, instead of setting the, uh, the near clipping plane to one, you can set it to 100 and you can see here, uh, things that are close to the camera, but not super close are, are not being drawn. Uh, this looks very strange when you, when you put the near clipping plane, something like in the middle of an object and we suddenly have like 
a max max masked oh my god mass out these things um like x-ray x-ray um view of link and that is a little bit weird uh we can go the other direction we can set the uh, near clipping plane back to one and this is more or less normal uh we can set the near clip clipping plane and things get interesting if you make this too small but if we set it to one one thousandth uh, this is this this is one one thousandth when we try to draw this value on the screen in Game Maker. It just gets truncated to two decimal places. You can see that some very interesting things are happening uh, in terms of the um, uh, edges, which are close to other other surfaces, like surfaces that are close to other surfaces in three D space, but not quite intersecting. You can see the computer is starting to have trouble figuring out exactly like what should be in front of what. Um, if you've ever if you've ever experienced Z fighting, uh, this is basically a a more extreme version of Z fighting. Z fighting being uh, two surfaces that are completely overlapping in three D space, and the computer has a little bit of trouble figuring out which should be in front. Uh, this is that, but instead of two surfaces that are actually overlapping, we just have two surfaces that are close to each other, and this is being caused by the uh, the near clipping plane being a value that is too small. Um, generally, you want the near clipping plane to be a value that's somewhat somewhat larger than this. Uh, about one is usually okay. If you're working with something like unity units or blender units or whatever, where one unit equals one meter, maybe 0 0.1 is fine. Uh, if I were to take this a step further and uh, let's say we can set the uh, the near cooling plane to zero, this is when things really start to get interesting. This is where you might want to be sit sit sitting down before you look at this. Uh, we suddenly have, if I were to actually enable that, uh, we have something that looks more or less like what happens if you were to um, like turn off depth testing entirely in a 3D scene, and you can see the objects that are far away from the from like other objects, like the the rocks being drawn that should be behind Link are now being drawn over Link. This looks extremely weird. Uh, would not recommend at all setting your near clipping plane to zero. That should honestly go without saying. Uh, the computer will be perfectly happy to do its best based on the based on the values that you give it, but. Uh, if you go too far, as you can see, uh, math starts to to not do what you really want it to do. And um, yeah, in case anybody's curious about what exactly happens if you actually do do this, uh, this is your answer. Uh, things also get a little bit, shall we say, interesting if you set your z near to a value that is farther away than your z far. If I were to set z near to 100 and z far to 10, you can see that, again, the computer will do its best to figure out exactly exactly what should be drawn based on the, the values that you give it, but it's uh, it's best is not enough, as, uh, as, as the kids say these days. Uh, again, not something you ever actually want to do. Um, I'm just, just in case anybody's actually curious about what happens if you, uh, if you decide to go against your better judgment and do something like this. Okay. And if I were to set Z near to negative, I haven't actually, I haven't actually tried that. Let's set Z near to something like negative 10. I'm pretty sure this will be even worse. I do not remember off the top of my head. Okay, now I just have a black screen. That's actually not helpful in the slightest. So, I don't know off the top of my head what the uh, the matrix math in the projection matrix uh, is doing when z near is a negative value. I'm assuming it's something, something in the realm of a division by zero or the square root of a negative number or something like that, and we're just like not drawing anything. Okay. So that is it for this video. I I do not have a lot to say here. I just made this because I haven't actually talked about the near and far clipping planes yet. And um, <clears throat> it's something that it's something that I'm sure at least a few people have wondered about. In a vast majority of cases, at least um, at least for me, you can just set Z near to 1 and Z far to like 3200 and whatever you want and um, and things will be fine. I guess I'll also mention that if you were to set this to something completely utterly insane, if you were to set the far clipping plane to something completely utterly insane, uh, not much would change. I believe this will also have some implications on the, uh, uh, the precision of like depth testing, but it's not nearly as pronounced as, um, as, as the near clipping plane when you start messing with that. Uh, if I were to get really far away, you might start to see surfaces overlapping each other, but at that point, they're, they're so small that you can't really make them out anyway. Anyway, let's, uh, what even is this value? That is thousand, million, this is a hundred million. I don't really think we need a, a far clipping plane of a hundred million. 
At that point, you start to worry about not even being able to represent numbers exactly because floating point, like, imprecision. By the way, if you want to see what I mean about, uh, about what happens when you turn off depth testing, uh, let me... Where is actually depth testing turned on? Is that done in here? I can just do it here, uh, right before we draw anything. These two functions took me a couple a couple attempts to spell them correctly. Uh, two functions, z write enable and z test enable. This turns on writing to and checking the z buffer, the depth buffer, um, in your in your 3D scenes. And if I were to turn those off, uh, you can see that we have something that looks a lot like what happens when I set the uh, the near coupling plane to zero. And we have uh, we have the rocks being that should be drawn behind Link instead of being drawn in front of him because we are not doing any depth testing. Okay, so I do want to do one more video on depth specifically. It has come up on occasion in the past when it comes to things such as uh, skyboxes in Game Maker, and I do suspect that it'll get a passing mention now and again. But for now, my name is Michael. I like uh, wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the little demo project for this that allows you to just mess around with the with the clipping planes and do whatever you want to them. Um, oh, that's right. I, uh, I I went back to hard coding these. Look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, you can see your name in the credits or hear yourself get a shout out at the end. Uh, I will have a link to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.